No, I'm not sure about that one. I don't know if that checks out. Yeah, believe it or not, today is actually going to be a bit of a fun Hoi 4 one, one that I've been meaning to do for a very long time. Hey, what's going on my gravy babies, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 for a bit of a weird one-off video for today. So as you know, I have done a whole metric turn of Hearts of Iron 4 on this channel, so I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff left in this game for me to really milk out for views anymore, and it's not a game that I really play that much because I've done everything there is to do. Now, uh, whilst that is true to a degree, uh, I've done everything that might be fun to do, it doesn't technically mean I have done everything. That's uh, because recently I came across a statistics list from Paradox that actually tweeted out the most used focuses from the new DLC, and that got me thinking, because... With all the nations we've played, we've only really gone down the either most OP path or the most fun path. And all I can say is with every DLC, they seem to be adding a bunch of stinkers to the uh, focus trees of some countries where, like Hungary per se, can go ahead and reform Austria-Hungary and get a bunch of free land. They can also do things like Greater Hungary and not get a bunch of free land and be really not that fun. Now, uh, every country seems to have a uh, variation of this type of focus tree, and not a lot of people use them from the statistics that Paradox have tweeted. So, I think today, we're gonna give them a go. And uh, obviously, we uh, talked about uh, Greater Hungary, so where better place to start than Hungary itself? Remember, guys, if I hit 300k subscribers, I'll be doing artillery only. And remember, guys, if I hit 500k subscribers, by the time this video gets 100,000 likes, I'll be doing artillery only to electric boogle. I'm gonna kill myself. Right, so the thing that I am talking about today is focuses that no one really does, because as you know, uh, the funnest way to uh, play Hungary nowadays is to go ahead and reunite Austria-Hungary, but to the right of that we also got a couple other focuses that don't look that fun. You know, now I thought that uh, Greater Hungary might have been the stinker in this focus tree, but uh, I also completely forgot that we actually got a communist Hungary tree. And oh my god, this is terrible. I mean, that 5% uh, recruitable population is not that bad, but really? This is it? I like to think I'm the first person that's probably ever even looked at this focus tree for more than a second. <laughs> ah, well, we can't shoot Horfi yet, because unfortunately our communism is non existerino Soon to be just like your brains, Mr. Horfi. Uh, there you go. Sorry about this, Horfi. Uh, probably the first person to actually do this in the history of Hoi 4, but uh, you need to go. You know, what I really don't get about this focus tree is going communist probably won't help you ever in this situation. So I don't know if you have played Hoi 4 before or know uh, any basis in history, but Hungary being communist in the middle of this region, probably not a good idea. Oh, I like how you can't go to early mobilization because of the Treaty of Trianon, but I can just go straight to partial mobilization. <laughs> uh, interesting paradox. Well, there you go. Horfi's assassinated. We got ourselves the famous egg. It's him. It's Humpty Dumpty. Oh my god, this focus tree just keeps getting worse and worse. We can't even go down join the common turn to get these two uh, focuses right here until we've got 50% support for communism. That's just a shot right in the cock. Uh, realistically, I would have gone ahead and started justifying on people, but I don't know if they've changed something with France now. They're a little on Tom. But uh, yeah, everyone's supported uh, guaranteed by France, so that's just not possible. Thanks. Leon! Oh, wh why does Franco look like someone's just used a smooth tool on a potato now? Oh, so I finally got my relations high enough with the Soviets and uh, enough for them to actually let me join. So if I just join the common turn, does that skip this focus? No, it just cancels it. So you, you can't... <laughs> Really? <laughs> I, I, can, I can see a lot of big brain plays were put into this focus tree paradox. Thank you. Alright, 938. Best friends with my bud Stalin, and now we're gonna go bully Romania. So uh, I did both of the uh, pressure events, and uh, well, nothing happened. Um, that's because I'm pretty sure the Soviets are the ones, yep, that have to decide if, if we do it or not. And they probably said no. Oh, there goes World War II. Uh, really wish uh, I could get involved in some way, you know, just. Oh, that looks fun. Oh. Romanians went communist. 
How? Oh, I see. So this focus that I do doesn't actually give me uh, some land. It actually just uh, it just turns them communist if the Soviets decide to do so. Which, yeah, I, I suppose so. I just don't know how long that communist government's gonna last. Really, really, you need my help against Finland? Finland? Yeah, I'm gonna rule you, uh, Romania. You're uh, you're not looking too communist in my books. Uh, not too communist at all. Oh shucks. Sure didn't see that one coming, Romania. Oh, 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 sorry. I just woke up and look, the Germans are finally going to declare war on the Soviets, which means we might see a little bit of action and hopefully death so we can move on to the next terrible focus straight. I only say I'm in the best position to be joining this war, but I just don't care at this point. Get me out of it. I, I guess uh, first shout out to the Soviets for piling all their troops in my land and uh, making it so my soldiers are all starving to death. Oh, 1943, and who would have thought it, but communist Hungary, it looks like it might be doomed to fail. Yeah, I probably have to say that the Hungarian communist tree is probably a strong two out of ten. Uh, there's definitely a million and one ways to actually play this campaign successfully. I just don't know why you'd bother. It's not fun. All right. It's focus number two, Japan. Probably one of the funnest nations in the game. Uh, they've got a lot of options, a lot of expansion to do. You can do a lot of cheesing, going early for America, Britain, or, you know, going straight into the Soviets. And you have focuses to facilitate this. You can even do communist, which again, probably not as fun as going the normal historical route or even the monarchist route, but uh, it's still got a lot of options in it, especially compared to uh, communist hungry but uh, there is one focus that I don't think I've ever done which is democratic democratic Japan saying it out loud is really enough to make you think oh I'm kind of a uh, speed running this uh, just a little bit but after going through your uh, focus tree you get yourself a coup gives you a civil war so half your army and navy is now gone and now you get to do the fun parts like being allied to Britain. Uh, you also go ahead and lose Korea and also Manchuria. Fun. Oh, nothing more I love than democracy, boys. Uh, so we go ahead, we get a focus to uh, retake Manchuria, which is pretty cool. We also get one to invite Korea to the Allies, which they accepted and then immediately left. Now we also get some cool focuses down, not focuses, decisions down here, which actually gives us stewardship over people's colonies. Now I'm not going to click them just yet, because I get the feeling they'll probably say no if they're not at war, so we'll be clicking one of these at some point. Now after annexing Manchuria, we also get a special little decision to return it to the Chinese, which also gives them an alliance offer, which I don't care about. Sorry about China, I'm gonna keep it. Oh, they actually just uh, handed it over immediately. Well, uh, I don't, I don't think I'm on this focus tree at all. Oh, shucks! Look at that. My focus is uh, so cool. I just made the Philippines free. Didn't really accomplish much. Oh, that wasn't too difficult. They all handed over their colonies to me, even though it's still cool. British Malaya, we're gonna have to change that, and on top of that, we're also about to annex Dutch East Indies, and uh, once we do that, I guess we're gonna have to go fight Germany. Oh, so, um, when uh, we retook Paris, apparently we just annex Vichy now, which is pretty interesting, never knew that, um, but uh, Vichy being independent and not in the war was actually kind of making this a lot easier. Uh, I can only imagine just how confused little Schmittler is in his bunker right now as millions of Japanese people just tear through France. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think after pushing halfway through Germany, I can go ahead and happily say I've seen enough of this one. Um, although, oh, I kind of missed that. Okay, this one, 100% wasn't that bad. I think other than uh, taking out China and losing Korea, it is pretty much a normal Japan game, but kind of switch sides where you join the UK and the allies, but you still get a lot of land and you get it without fighting. So I still think this was actually a pretty promising campaign. Check it out if you haven't, but uh, I guess now it's time for another cursed one. I, I, I guess for the rating, I'd give it a I give it like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Still pretty fun, definitely a different perspective, and I get the feeling not a lot of people have probably actually tried this one out, so go ahead and try it, kid. Alright, <sighs> this one is gonna suck some cojones. Welcome to New Zealand! Alright, so already New Zealand doesn't have the most in-depth focus tree or gameplay or just anything. It's New Zealand. What do you expect? But it was one of the first countries to get a focus tree, and as you can see, it's 
very in depth, huh? Very in depth. Realistically, there is no reason to play New Zealand other than their amazing tank. So for the New Zealand starting situation, we are a Dominion of GB and we've got ourselves a leader who looks like a Lord of the Rings extra. We also have a few different focuses we can actually go down. So obviously we can strengthen the Commonwealth, which is our historical one, or we could go ahead and do the Statue of Westminster and say goodbye Great Britain. Now, uh, there's actually not a whole lot to do after this. This, you could go ahead and go communist and doesn't really give you much and after joining the common turn in the Hungary game I'd rather not do it again. Oh, but there is one thing I will be doing. You see, you could go ahead and even do the uh, the, the fascist path, you know, that will still give you something to do in some bizarre way or you could do the, the communist or stay monarchist or you could go ahead and break independence from GB and then just stay democratic and leave the allies. Literally spectator mode. Oh, 1936. New Zealand's free. And we're no longer gonna be in the allies. Don't know what we do after that. I mean, I just, I, I don't know what you do now. I mean, you're independent. You can go ahead and sit here watch the world. Uh, I did notice that they have gone ahead and uh, added Polynesia as a formable nation now. You just gotta get those somehow. That would be fun. Although I think you can actually get those through decisions or something now if you stay in the Allies, so... What is the point of this focus? I, I don't need to go past 1936 to tell you we're not gonna carry this on, <laughs> okay? Uh, we'll get this one a strong 0 0.2 out of 0 0.3, so it's pretty good. All right, now the last one we're going to be showcasing today is the good old PRC with our best friend Mao Zedongu. And we're going to go ahead and do the unthinkable, and, uh, well, we're, we're not going to stay with Mao. We're gonna, we're gonna change that up just a little bit. Now, the thing is, you can go ahead and stay with agrarian socialism, keep on going down to Maoism, you know, proclaim the People's Republic. Uh, you could do that with this one too, or, or you could, you could Bernie bro it up. So uh, after you shoot Mao, you get a guy with a beard. And that's not just where the fun ends, it keeps on going. So as you keep going down your folks tree, you now get the fun decisions of the power struggle in China, which is you trying to overthrow the government democratically. And uh, most importantly though, it's famous for doing this to your political power. Help! Uh, you can also just go ahead and uh, shoot Chiang Kai-shek and it makes this whole thing a lot easier. Oh, it's uh, 1937, I've gone ahead and shot Chiang Kai-shek. Whoever this guy is is now in charge and we can go ahead and press this button and boom! Communist China wins! <laughs> uh, now, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a bad way to do Communist China. It's actually a pretty pretty fun way to do it. You get to do it uh, incredibly early, and you kind of do it a bit differently than having Mao in charge. Instead, he's just a field marshal, and you can go ahead and conquer the world and fight Japan as normal. I guess the only big downside to this is probably the minus 700 political power you're probably going to be running if you want to do this as quick as possible. And, uh, yeah. Otherwise... Not that bad, really. There you go, I kind of half-heartedly fought the, uh, the war of Japan there, and we got the peace out. It's 1940, and I'm pretty sure this communist China is actually a lot stronger than normal China, other than the political power thing, because you don't get the, uh, the negative, uh, army stuff that China does. You only get the Red Army weakened, which you only have to do a couple focuses to get rid of. Um, they you pretty strong pretty quickly, and your political power does get back up eventually, and, uh, you know what? I actually think I kind of prefer this communist China to the normal one. Sorry about that, Mao. Uh, Zhang Lan is now my best friend. But yeah, this was just a few of the very useless and not very good focuses in Hearts of Iron 4. You know, quote unquote useless or not very used focuses is probably the best way to go about it. And uh, I definitely had fun with a few of them. Some didn't have much fun with. Uh, but yeah, that's just kind of the, what's gonna happen if every nation is intended to have a focus tree, a whole bunch of them, well, they're gonna be pretty useless. And, uh, God, I wish my hungry looked like that.
Uh, but yeah, I think Japan was definitely my favorite one. A bit of a nice surprise, actually, because I don't even know if I've ever done Democratic Japan before, but either way, yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Communist China was next, and then Hungary and Japan, uh, New Zealand, well, they can go to hell. So yeah, I'd give this one like a 7 out of 10. Pretty good to do. Uh, I'm probably going to leave it off here for today, though. There's probably still a whole bunch more focuses I haven't even looked at that are pretty goddamn useless. I know there's a whole bunch of new ones with France and Spain and even GP, and I know specifically there is one with Spain that I might cover if you guys want to see more useless focus trees in Hearts of Iron 4. If you do, feel free to uh, leave a like, you know, 20,000 likes. I'll do another episode of Hoi 4 useless focus trees, but uh, until next time guys, I'm gonna catch you on the flippity flip and just go rinse my eyeballs out after all this, uh, well it's it mostly the, the hungry one that has killed my brain. <laughs>